So today we're going to look at the arc fault detection mm. device by Crabtree as yep. part of their Star Breaker range. What's the reason we're looking at the AFDD today? Well, obviously, uh, it's very important in the 18th edition. This is sort of uh, emerging technology, isn't it? Is. it? Uh, it's established in other countries, but it's emerging for us. Uh, and the uh, regulations are recommending that, yes. that we should consider AFDD devices. And, and again, for our, from our point of view, if you're looking to protect your installation, do a professional job, why would you not use it? Uh, but the main reason that we uh, particularly want to look at it is that our learners have been fitting, installing, testing, using, powering these up. And we've not actually had a chance to have a little play with one. So uh, we thought it was high time that we had a look at one of these, didn't we? So yeah, we're going we're gonna to show how we strap to the side of it the miniature RCBO mm. by Crabtree. Yeah. Is that true? Is there an issue with the larger original yeah. star ones? Yeah. So the, uh, the, and again, what a fantastic product it was, you know, and it, and it still is. It still does its job. However, it's not compatible. Uh, with this AFDD device, uh, main reason just being one of uh, physical dimensions. You can see there it's clearly not designed to fit next to it. There is no way that those are going to connect to each other. So we need to be connecting it onto the Crabtree miniature RCBO, which are a fantastic bit of kit anyway. So what we can do is we'll bring the camera in and we'll attempt to strap it together. It's always easier off camera. We yep. always find that, don't we? Yep. When we try and do it on camera, we'll have a struggle with a clip or a screw yep. or something like that. So we'll strap the art fault detection device next to the miniature RCBO Starbreaker designed by Crabtree, and then we'll actually install it in the consumer and power it up. Brilliant, let's do it. So Joe, we've got the art fault detection device just here, mm -hmm. and I can see it's got a bridging bar across the top. Can you explain that to me, please? Yeah, so the idea is this is your connecting buzz bar that goes across to uh, your miniature RCBO. So we're just going to uh, push these terminals here into uh, the slots that are on top of the RCBO. Uh, just one point to take note of, this bar does not get removed. This is fixed permanently to the AFDD unit. Uh, and these screws here and here are actually to connect up the outgoing circuit. So we're talking about the outgoing line and neutral being connected in the top of the AFD unit and yeah. this bar actually being permanently fixed and not being able to be removed, is that correct? Absolutely, yeah, that's correct. So this just goes into the consumer unit just as a, a complete piece as it is there. So in front of us, Joe, we've got two miniature RCBOs, one rated at 32 amps and one rated at 6 amps. They're also obviously a combined RCD device, which are miniature RCBOs. What's the rated value of the art fault detection device? So the art fault detection device, uh, you can't see it very clearly on camera here because it's not printed, it's embossed, but you can see there that uh, this has a maximum rating of 40 amps, so we could strap onto this uh, as high as a 40 amp RCBO. So for means of demonstration for this, we can actually connect it to a lighting circuit one of our students is wired up, so we're going to select which one of the two RCBOs go. Yeah, so as you said, we've got a B32 and a B6 because it's a lighting circuit. Uh, obviously, the calculations show that we're going to use a B6 circuit breaker. Uh, the B32 amp, we would uh, generally use that for a ring final circuit. Uh, and we'll have a little chat in a future video uh, about one of the issues surrounding AFD protection and uh, ring circuits. But we'll come back to that another time. So Joe, good luck. You're going to on camera attempt, and we've done it off camera nice and easy, but the minute that camera's on you, we're going to attempt just to connect that 6 amp Type B miniature RCBO now to our art fault detection device. So I'm going to be absolutely honest with you guys. Uh, this is actually the second time that I've attempted to put one of these together. Uh, the first time we did it on camera and uh, I nearly took my finger off accidentally using a screwdriver. So we've found a safer way of doing it and, uh, and we've canned that footage. So um, what we've got to think about when we're connecting this AFDD onto the RCBO is there's a few things just to watch out for. These clips are going to hold the two devices together. So we want to make sure that they are out of the way before we start putting the two near each other. We've also got this keyway from the AFDD, which marries up with a slot on the RCBO, and that allows the AFDD device to trip off the uh, RCBO. So when we bring these together, we've just got to make sure that we line those up nice and carefully, like that. So they've married up with each other now, and they will uh, control each other in that way. And then we've just got to make sure that these clips go on. Now, the easiest way that we've found of doing this is to try and push them from the hinge side over onto the locking side. And actually when you do that, you can see it falls into place quite easily uh, without the need for an additional tool. So if we just push that over, we can see there that that has locked onto there quite nicely. So that's just gonna grip the two uh, devices together. We will then use our torque screwdriver to uh, do up the locking screws 
for the RCBO onto the AFDD, but I think for my money we'll probably pop that into the board and at that point we'll tighten up the screws so that we're not trying to uh, wrestle this around while it's not firmly held in place. Thanks Joe. Okay then guys, so we've put the AFDD and the RCBO unit together, so what's the next step? I'm going to attempt with the camera in the way to actually fit my art fault detection device and my miniature RCBO, remembering it's got the star breaker design, so it actually clips into the bar at the back, which is its buzz bar, mm -hmm. and clips onto the dim rail. So hopefully when I just position it like so in place, hopefully it will just click into position, Fantastic. and there we go. This was a point I was trying to make to my learners in the week, is that uh, if you're having to force that bottom uh, bar in, you've got it misaligned. It should just click in that easily. It is really straightforward to get that in there. So next we're going to connect in our neutral and line conductors from the lighting circuit that we've chose. The CPC has already been connected into the actual earth bar here and as it's a miniature RCBO we've got the flying neutral lead which also will be needed connected into the neutral bar. So which conductor are you going to hook up first there Gary? So we start with the fly lead neutral from the miniature RCBO and we need to going to terminate it there in number one. We've only got one circuit in this distribution board. And we're going to attempt with the camera in the way to try and get that down to 1.7 Newton meters of torque. Like so, let me just move it away. We'll obviously dress the cables accordingly once we've got them connected actually within the device itself. We've now got the neutral and line conductors that are going to fit into which is really the actual art fault detection side of the device. The bridge between the two means there's no terminals here on the miniature RCBO side. What's the torque rating of those terminals that we're going to set that to there, Gary? The torque rating of the terminals that we're going to use for here and here, they're going to be actually connected at two Newton meters of torque. So as we look at the actual driver itself, we're setting that up to two Newton meters of torque. So we're going to pop our conductors in. If I start with the neutral, which is at the back, just position it like so, and down with my torque screwdriver into the right torque setting. Okay, what we come. Okay, and then we drop in the line conductor, and again to the appropriate torque setting. Okay. And we can see now we've got our neutral and our line conductors connected between our arc fault detection device bridging across to our miniature RCBO. And I think we're possibly, Joe, ready to go live with it. Fantastic. Let's power it up and see what that looks like. Hold on there, Joe. Before we get too excited, I know we're desperate to get in. We did say that we were going to tighten to the terminals here and here on the miniature RCBO to make sure the bridge between the arc fault detection device was in place. So we've got to tighten those up as well. And we said that they are how many Newton meters? So that's also two Newton meters for the RCBO. I'd just like to also say that this circuit has been tested and we're ready after our dead test to actually energize this circuit under control conditions in our electrical workshop. Are we now ready, Joe? Yes. Okay, excitement over and done with. We're ready to power up. So the RCBO and art fault detection device have been fitted, and then we'll turn on the main switch to energize the distribution board. And if we turn on the miniature RCBO, we can see we have now a red light on our art fault detection device. Well, that can't be right, Joe, can it? Uh, well, actually, that's absolutely spot on, guys, because when you look at the instructions that we get from the manufacturer, we can see here, and this is a sticker that you can actually place on the board so that the uh, consumer can uh, see what's going on here. At the top of the list, we've got a solid red light, and that means that the device is operable. In other words, uh, everything's working just fine with that AFDD device. Okay, brilliant. And then we can see there's some other colours indicated here for other faults, and we're suggesting these might be flashing faults as we come down because we've got these sprinkled um, lines around the actual symbol. Is that true, Joe? Yeah, that's certainly how it appears. So we've got a solid uh, line here, so that indicates a, a solid on light. Here we've got a dashed line, a broken line, and to my mind that indicates that it's going to flash when we've got one of those faults. So looking at the list here, if we've got a serial or parallel arc, it looks like half the window will be clear and half the window will be yellow, and we believe that may be flashing as well. And we believe well. that light will be a yellow flashing light, that's correct. What other faults will this detect, guys? It will be both a serial and a parallel arc that it will detect, and as this is a radial circuit, it will actually pick up both of those. Yep. We'll discuss the limitations of ring final circuits in a separate video. Fantastic. We go down to the next one. This time we've got it flashing and we believe half the window 
window will be clear and half the window will be red. Mm -hmm. And in that case, what have we got, Joe? Then we've got a flashing red light and that flashing red light indicates that we've actually got an over voltage fault. In other words, uh, the voltage has become too high and the circuit has been disconnected for that reason. The self test, which we haven't done yet. So by pressing this button here, we can see that the miniature RCBO is activated or turned off and now we've de-energized the circuit. If we re-energize it, we can see that the red light returns mm. and it's suggesting here that if we had a problem with that, that we'd actually have a self-test problem if half the window was yellow, half the window was red and it was flashing. Yep. So this is the functional test for the art fault detection device. Is that correct, Joe? Uh, that is correct. So that window, not only is it a light and an indicator, it's also the test button. So by pressing that with your finger, you can get the RCBO to trip off, just exactly as Gary demonstrated a moment ago. It's operating through the keyway that we lined up carefully earlier. And it just works in exactly the same way as the test button on the RCBO, that if you press that, that will also trip the RCBO off as normal. And we've shown this before in previous presentations, how the position of the miniature RCBO test button is one where your finger gets in the way of it. But once the mechanism's been operated, it actually yep. disconnects the circuit, Joe, and your finger's irrelevant to the position. So sure. it's gone off and it completes its journey into the off position. So Joe, we got a little bit of a play around there with the arc fault yeah. detection device. Yeah, what a great bit of kit as well. Really nice and user friendly, easy to put together. Even I managed to do it. Yeah, we did. So uh, yeah, it's really good. So we clipped it into the, the Crabtree Starbreaker design. Mm -hmm. It shows you again how easy that design is. Yep. And as it emerges, as you said before, this technology will be potentially more widespread as the 18th edition and on, onwards editions develop of the wiring mm -hmm. regulations. Yeah, definitely. So. We've had a little play around with them. We yep. haven't really done anything mega technical. We're going to go back perhaps and look at the insulation yep. resistance test and how the uh, art fault detection device will be affected by the voltage on that test. Yeah, sure. But yeah. I think, Joe, do you reckon? Should we close it out? Yeah, yep. we will. We, we hope, hope this, this video, video has been, been some help. help.